You're traveling through northern Utah in the Uinta Basin when you happen to stumble across a 480-acre ranch on the market that has an asking price so cheap it should be considered robbery. It has all the things you've ever wanted in a piece of property. It had a high ridge to the north, which gave a perfect vista of the green pastures, woodlands, and a creek to the south. As the boxes are being checked off in your head, it occurs to you that this very well could be the dream home you, your spouse, and two children have always wanted. Paperwork gets signed, and you receive the deed to your dream home with disbelief in your eyes. It's finally yours! The property had been abandoned for roughly seven years prior, so to no one's surprise, the homestead is in a state of disrepair. But that's nothing a little elbow grease can't fix. You open the doors to find that the home has deadbolt locks throughout its entirety. The front door, the back door, every interior door the house had to offer has a deadbolt associated with it. Even the windows come with this disturbingly interesting little feature. This doesn't bother you much though. You purchased the property from an elderly couple who may have been just a bit too paranoid. They did kind of strike you as weird, so none of this is beyond reason. The first day of moving in, and you, along with the rest of the family, see a wolf majestically crossing the pastures and making its way to your general direction. But something seems strange. The wolf is roughly three times the size of what it normally would be, and it seems so friendly. The wolf stops a good 50 yards away from you and your family, and stares with piercing blue eyes that contain a human-like intelligence in them. It begins to slowly walk towards everyone, and your father, who had been helping you unpack, musters up the courage to actually pet this giant beast. Nothing happens, and soon after, everyone is making their way to their new friend. A short distance away, a few of your breeding cows and their calves are shaking in fear inside of their pen. All of them are scared except for one brave calf that sticks its head outside of the safety of the iron bars of its corral. In an instant, the huge jaws of this monstrous wolf are clamped around the head of the calf, and it starts trying to rip it out of its corral. The calf starts bleeding and thrashing its body. You grab an axe handle from your truck and begin to beat the wolf in its sides, but it doesn't even phase the beast. Quick, get the magnum, you yell and your son follows the order, grabbing the 357 from the truck. You put a shot in its abdomen, and the beast still isn't phased. No yelp, no registry of the gunshot put into it at all as it keeps thrashing the poor calf and attempting to rip its entire body through the corral bars. It takes two more shots before the wolf lets go of the calf and backs away a short distance from everyone. You put a fourth shot in the beast's torso, where you expect its heart to be, and still no effect. It just sits there, staring at everyone, undisturbed by the four bullets you've just put into it. The fact that the beast is behaving like it hasn't been shot disturbs you, and out of fear, you have your son grab the 30 out 6 You aim the rifle and pull the trigger, expecting the massive wolf to drop in a lifeless heap, but instead it just backs away a couple more yards. You fire again and see a chunk of meat fly off of the wolf, but it's still standing there casually. It nonchalantly looks at the calf one more time before trotting back to where you saw it come from. Fear of this apex predator brings you to the conclusion that you can't let it live, and you and your teenage son begin to track it. You track it all the way to a mud bank. The paw prints are easily visible, so you follow them out to the middle of the mud bank, and they just disappear. You have just experienced one day in the life of Terry and Gwen Sherman. The first day of them moving on to Skinwalker Ranch to be specific. Skinwalker Ranch has many different kinds of phenomena that occur on it, but today we will be discussing what the ranch is nicknamed after. Today, we will be talking about the Skinwalker. The myth of the Skinwalker comes from Native American lore, specifically the Navajo people. Keep in mind that many Navajo believe firmly in the existence of skinwalkers and refuse to talk about them publicly for fear of retribution. They believe skinwalkers walk freely among them and secretly transform under the cover of night, so scrounging up information on them is a little tough, but I did what I could. The actual name for the skinwalker is Yi Nadlushi, which roughly translates to with it he goes on all fours. Shapeshifting. So what is a skinwalker? Skinwalkers are typically described as shamans or medicine men who have been corrupted by a desire for power. However, not just anyone can become a skinwalker. You have to be chosen, deemed worthy, and initiated. The initiation ritual requires the sacrifice of a sibling or close family member. Once this is done, they are imbued with the powers of the skinwalker and become a member of a very secret society. This secrecy is why Native American people shy away from talking about them openly. They are believed to behave like normal members of the tribe during the day and meet in hidden caves at night to engage in all forms of taboo as defined by the Navajo people, such as cannibalism, incest, and the desecration of graves and burial sites. 
Groups of skinwalkers are believed to be led by an old but extremely powerful skinwalker. Skinwalkers can take the shape of any animal just by wearing its skin. For this reason, the Navajo people had a strict policy against wearing animal pelts. The tribe only wears sheepskin and buckskin during ceremonial events and because they are the skins of animals that aren't predators. Skinwalkers, on the other hand, regularly wear the pelts of wolves, coyotes, bears, cougars, and foxes. They will even wear animal skulls and antlers on their heads. Skinwalkers can also shapeshift into other people. A telltale sign that a skinwalker has taken the form of another person is by looking at their animalistic eyes. But be careful, it is believed that a skinwalker can take over a person's mind simply by locking eyes with them. They are also credited with amazing endurance and the ability to keep up with fast moving vehicles. Skinwalkers engage in all kinds of evil deeds and mischief such as murder, animal attacks, and disappearances among the Navajo people. Sickness and unexplained death are also associated with the presence of skinwalkers. They are also known to scratch and bang on walls and knock on windows to toy with their victims. The only way to stop a skinwalker is to call them by their full name. It is believed that when you know the identity of the skinwalker and make them aware of it, this brings them back to reality where the weight of all their evil they've done weighs on them to such an extent that they die. In one incident, a description of a skinwalker was given when a woman delivering paper drove by one day on the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. She claimed to have heard scratches on the passenger door where her child was, when suddenly the door flew open and a creature with piercing eyes stared her in the face. It was half human, half beast. She fought it off, eventually closing the door. As she sped off, she could hear the creature keeping pace with the vehicle. The sounds of her pursuer faded away when she cried for help at a nearby convenience store. When help came out, the beast was nowhere to be found. Though it may sound like a mere legend to us, for the Navajo people it is a real thing and the skinwalker's existence showed itself in the mid-70s when a Nevada lawyer named Michael Stuff filed a suit against a man in a skinwalker, claiming the use of witchcraft to affect the custody case that he was working on. The child was given permission to spend the night with his father, and when the child returned to his mother, he told of strange events that occurred that night. According to the boy, he spent the night with his father and a medicine man. They took two wooden dolls that looked like his mother and the lawyer. According to the boy, the medicine man took the two dolls and began chanting. They then took the two dolls to a cemetery and buried them. When the lawyer consulted a Navajo professor on the issue, he was informed that the ritual was to make the mother and he end up in the same cemetery where the dolls were buried. And the only way to stop this was to have the skinwalker aware that he knew about the curse. Thus, he filed the case against them. Luckily, the judge of the case took this rather seriously and gave the mother full custody of the child and the father was forced to pay full child support. Skinwalkers have made their presence known in consumable media since as far back as 1913 in the film The Werewolf. An early episode of The X-Files features a skinwalker, and the popular TV show True Blood makes reference to them. The series Lost Tapes devotes an entire episode to it, and it's surprisingly accurate to what the legend actually is. And of course, the novel Skinwalkers has an accurate representation of what it actually is. The downside of the story of the Skinwalker being introduced into popular culture is that it has now become a blanket term for shapeshifting and is basically a TV trope. There is also a tendency for Skinwalkers in pop culture to be mixed up with European stories of werewolves and lycanthropy, and moving further away from the characteristics described in traditional Native American stories. Because the Skinwalker isn't talked about much among the Native American people themselves, and even less with outsiders, we've taken our surface level understanding of what it is, and added our own attributes to it, and made a bastardized Frankenstein version for the public to be afraid of. Because of the very nature and abilities a Skinwalker possesses, they are almost never caught which further reinforces the reluctance of native people to discuss these things with those they do not trust. Sightings of strange, unexplained creatures have been attributed to skinwalkers, even to this day. Skinwalkers often appear in secluded roadways late at night to try and get drivers to swerve and crash their cars. Other reports claim that skinwalkers have been seen leaping over moving cars or running alongside fast-moving vehicles on desolate freeways. So the next time you're on a cross-country trip and you hear what may be tapping on your window, you have unintentionally stumbled into the path of a skinwalker. Anyways, I hope you liked this episode of the podcast. Please share it with all your friends, and I hope you tune into the next one.